Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. On today's program, we're going to talk about Eastern's big win over Illinois State in the Mid-America Classic. Also preview the upcoming game with Northern Illinois and have an interview on the state of EIU athletics. All that and much more right here on Panther Sports Talk. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's has alignment checks along with oil changes. Located at 800 Madison in Charleston. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome back to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WEIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're joined by EIU head football coach Dino Babers. And, Coach, I thought about a different, couple different ways to start the show, talk about how the weather has changed and it's, there's Christmas in the air and saying that the, Christmas of, the crispness of the Panther football offense was very evident on Saturday night. But I know one of the things you and I were talking about on the way over here is you wanted to talk about the energy and the excitement that was in O'Brien Field on Saturday. What a, was a, what a positive energy uh, from our crowd, uh, from our student body, uh, the administration, the faculty, Charleston and Matt Toon. I mean, the energy in the stands was unmatched, and I thought that our players really fed off that energy uh, first, second, and third quarter. Now, you talk about that, and a lot of times I think you worry, and it's been, it's not just at Eastern, it's at other places too. People come, they watch the first half, then they go to the tailgate, and then they don't ever come back. I think people were truly interested to see how many points can Eastern score today against Illinois State? And I know you guys changed the philosophy a little bit in the second half because you had a comfortable lead, but you still were playing to score when you needed to score. But the game seemed to be well in hand and kept people's attention. Well, uh, when we came out at halftime, the thing, the thing that I was excited about is just, it was to see the stand still filled and, uh, and everybody still waiting, to, I mean, still willing to cheer on this football team to victory. I did not think the game was in hand until somewhat uh, in the third quarter after we scored 14 points. I felt that we pretty much had that game in hand, but we, the one thing we didn't want to do is be that storybook comeback that everybody talks about and, and let them get back into the game. They came out at halftime and marched down and scored on our defense, but after that our defense tightened up and we were able to put a couple of points on the board on offense and, and get, it back, get it back under control. Now, I know all week you've talked about how this team was really focused and you'd never seen a team really dialed in the way this team was for this game. Part of that, I think, is the success we've had early on, but part of it has also got to be the bad taste that was left in a lot of those guys' mouth last year and the double overtime loss to normal. You know, it, that, that, I, I, I go back to that game because I really think that game shaped us. I really think that game was the reason why we won the OVC conference and definitely the reason why we were able to beat Murray by one point the next week. That game left a very bad taste in our mouth. We thought about that game th for 365 days and we wanted to be respected by that football team. We wanted to be respected by that coaching staff. We wanted to gain some respect of the, of the central part of the state of Illinois and to let people know that uh, you know we played Southern Illinois, we played Illinois State and here we are, East Illinois, both of those opponents, we have more people from the state of Illinois than both of those teams combined as starters. And we want this to be our state. We want to we want to recruit the city of Chicago. We want to recruit the city of St. Louis and we want to recruit the state of Illinois. So if you want to recruit the state, I guess you need to try to win the state. And we were fortunate to get wins over both of those programs. Now, two and zero in the state so far, you mentioned you guys beat Southern, beat Illinois State. You're going to try to go three and zero in the state this weekend when you play Northern Illinois. We'll talk a little bit about them in a few minutes. But the player that's going to be the focus, because you talked about kids from the Chicago area, is Jimmy Garoppolo. He is a Chicago land kid. If people didn't know who he was, and I don't know how you wouldn't know who he was before the other night, you definitely probably know who he is now with the seven touchdown performance. He was on fire. He was on fire. And uh, I'm not sure I've seen a hotter quarterback in the first half of a football game. I've seen RG3 mighty hot in some games, but I'll put Jimmy right there with the first half of that game against Illinois State. 
and uh, it just didn't really matter what, what they were trying to do. It just didn't really matter. We, we had an answer for it, and he was going to put the ball in a place where they couldn't touch it and only our guys could catch it. And uh, uh, my hat's off to him. He played an exceptional game. I thought the receivers, the defense, the offense, the special teams, outside of some kicking difficulties, I thought it was the most complete game we've played all year. Now, I'll just give you a story on how I've gotten used to having Jimmy be successful as a quarterback. We're sitting up there, and he threw the sixth touchdown pass, and the scout from the San Francisco 49ers is up there, and he says, that's six for him in the half. And I had to think about it for a second. I was like, yeah, I guess it is. I said, I just – you kind of have gotten used to him throwing touchdown passes and that the offense is doing good things, that six didn't seem like an unreachable number. And then when he got to seven, it's like if it had been a close game, who knows how many he might have been able to go for. <laughs> it would have been interesting. <laughs> it would have been interesting, but I'm glad it wasn't a close yeah. game because we got an opportunity to play our entire football team. We got our we got our twos in there. We got our threes in there. We got our walk-ons that are such valuable members of our scout team. I mean, after that game in our locker room, to look around that locker room and see our La Familia, to see our Ohana, to see our family inside that locker room, so excited that all their brothers, all their brothers got to play was a uh, uh, a very, very touching moment for me. Now, another big week for the receiving core. Eric Laura, we, we've talked about him for the last two years, another exceptional day. Adam Drake is continuing to come on, and Keandre Gober has really established himself as really your, your deep threat to be able to score balls. I was doing the game notes last night. He's got five career touchdowns. Four of them are from more than 55 yards. So if he's going to catch the ball, there's a good chance he's going to take it deep. You know, it's interesting because I thought one of his best plays was he, he ran a route later on in the game and, and we thought he was going to go deep and he broke it off for about a 14-yard stop route and caught the ball and got out of bounds and I ran over there and I mean, I'm like, I was so proud of him to see that he just took what the defense gave him. And uh, Keandre's, Keandre's a special guy and, and the more as he matures as a player and a person, he's going to be, uh, become better and better and better. There's, there's no limit to what he can do with his ability. Now the running game is successful again. I know kind of a, a personal goal for you is we're going to get around that 200-yard mark rushing against Illinois State, and you guys exceeded that. I think you were in that 280 to 300 range, and a good, good balanced performance there. Taylor Duncan and Shepard Litter both had a good number of carries, and both one was over 100 yards and the other one was closing in on it. Well, I, well, you you started a, a rift in the staff last week, Rich. You did, because you you told me that we had never rushed for 200 yards, and it just goes to show you when you get caught up in doing all the things as a head coach as you, as you do. And I looked at you and I said, "You got to be kidding me! We haven't rushed for 200 yards in a game." And I went back and had conversations with Coach Lynch and Coach Maddox that we needed to make sure we eliminated that right away because the one thing that we can do in this offense and we have to be able to do is run the football. And 200 yards a game is not a magical mark for me. That's something that we needed to attain. So it was the goal of the offensive linemen. They told me they were gonna get it done. The backs told me they were gonna get it done. And I told them how many carries they were gonna to have to get it done. And, and they came in on mark. So my hat's off to Coach Lynch and uh, Coach Maddox and the O-line and the running backs and uh, congratulations to them and uh, fantastic effort on the, on the ground. Now, when you, you talk about the run, stopping the run has really been an emphasis for, for the defense this year. And once again, a, a good job. The, the total numbers, I, I think, are a little deceiving to some people when they see total offense that, that teams are getting against us. A lot of it's coming on the pass, but a lot of that is predicated on the fact that we're, we've been ahead in several games and teams are having to pass to get back into games. But the run defense has been really good early only one guy has rushed for over 50 yards against us so far this year as an individual. Well, that's, that's the key to the game. The key to the, to me, again, football is a, is a physical game. It's, it's what makes it so great. It's so different than basketball and baseball and everything else. It's the most physical game out there. And if you're going to win the game, you have to win in the trenches. And to win in the trenches, you have to be able to stop the run. And you have to be able to run the ball. And to be real honest with you, and that's the only way I would be with you, if you took away that part of the game, I'm not sure I'd coach it. It's the part that really gets me excited. I mean, we see Jimmy throwing for six and seven touchdowns, and I'm excited for him in the wideouts. And, you know, I love those guys. But when you see ground and pound and you see 200 yards roll out on the, on the rushing charts, 
I mean, that's what football is all about. And anybody that really knows me or any player on this football team that's really tied in to what we're trying to accomplish here in Eastern Illinois knows that that is as true a statement as you can get from me. And I'm sure they feel the exact same way. Now, we'll segue in, into rushing and keep that kind of as the topic. The quarterback you're going to face this week, Jordan Lynch, Northern Illinois, he is a dual threat. If, if you're going to describe one on the schedule of who you're going to play this year, he leads their team in rushing. He leads their team in passing. If he could throw it to himself, he may lead their team in receiving, but you can't do that in football. There's a reason why he, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate and led that team to the Orange Bowl last year. He comes from a great high school program. He, he's a great leader. Uh, he's unbelievable. He really is. And uh, I, don't know how to, I don't know how we're going to stop him. I mean, I'm watching the tape. I'm like, whoa. Well, if you do that, they're going to do this. And if you do this, they're going to do that. I don't know if you stop a guy like that. I think you need to try to contain all, all his weapons around him. But uh, again, I think it's like the Jordan rules. Uh, that young man's going to get his points. That young man's going to get his yards. It's whether you can take the other things away from him and, and see if you can find a way to score one more point more than them. Now, when you talk about that, I know you guys haven't really played a, what I would consider a mobile quarterback this year. And not, not a true mobile quarterback maybe last year. Some guys that probably ran, but that wasn't. It seems like run seems to be the first option for him from the little bit I have saw at the end of last year and just looking at his numbers this season. Do you do some different things scheme-wise for this game? Because you really don't want to change your whole philosophy when you know you're going to go back into a different type of philosophy the following week. Yeah, it's, it's a great <laughs> question. Um, here's the deal. I, we need to win OVC championships. That's why I'm here is to win OVC championships. So to answer your question, it's you don't want to change. You don't want to change for one week to stop this phenomenon because it's going to affect your team down the road. So you try to do things that you're capable of doing. You try to do things that you've done before and you hope that you contain him or he's a little bit off his game. But I, I, I can't remember that young man playing a bad game. I remember watching him when they were playing Florida State in the Orange Bowl. I mean, I just, the guy is one of those players that God just went down and touched and said he wants to make a heck of a football player. And uh, God bless him. I mean, it's, I'm going to watch him too. I mean, the guy is fun to watch. Now, last week you talked about how the team was really dialed in against Illinois State. Part of that is the rivalry game and the respect that the two programs have for playing that game against each other. Northern a little bit of a different animal in the fact that it's not a rivalry game, but you're going to have to kind of keep the team a little focused from the fact that I think you have a lot of kids from the Chicagoland area that are on your team, and you have some guys that went to high school and know a lot of people at Northern that's a little different scenario than you've kind of faced when some of these other games so far this season. You know, absolutely. Uh, a lot of they have they have kids from the Chicago area, and of course, our team is mostly from the Chicago area, Chicago and the state of Illinois. So there's a lot of crossover in knowing who's playing and what, and and what their athletic ability is. I think the uh, I think the toughest thing though is is trying to come back from a from a rival game and not have a letdown. Again, we were so focused, we were so locked in. And now we've just got to find a way to, to get back there. And uh, it's going to be difficult, but we'll try to start that task today. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck this weekend up there. The kickoff is at 6 o'clock in DeKalb. The game is on ESPN3. We hope you can make the trip up to Husky Stadium. It's about a little bit over a three-hour drive up there. If you can't make it for some reason, Panther Football Radio Network will have the broadcast at 6 o'clock. After that, we'll hope you'll be back. Hope to have the stands packed again. The Panthers will be back at home on September 28th against Eastern Kentucky. So, Coach, best of luck in that. We'll preview the OVC season next week. We'll be right back with this week in EIU Athletics. And after that, a halftime interview from this past weekend's game with Mike Bradhead with Athletic Director Barbara Burke on the state of EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Panther football moved to 3-0, capturing the Mid-America Classic against rival Illinois State, 57 to 24 at O'Brien Field. Volleyball went one and two at the University of Missouri Kansas City tournament. They're now four and six on the season. Their one win came against Presbyterian, three to one. Women's soccer fell twice last week. They're now 0 and seven on the season. They lost three to nothing at Missouri and three to nothing against Loyola Chicago. Men's soccer drops to 0 and four on the season, losing two matches at Lakeside Field, four to one to Loyola Chicago and three to one to Western Michigan. Both matches were part of the 50-year celebration of Panther soccer at EIU. Cross country was in normal Illinois for the Illinois State invite. 
The men placed fourth overall, while the women placed fifth. The top men's finisher was Mike Heslaw in 10th place, and the women's top finisher was Emily Brelsford in 14th place. Women's rugby dropped their third straight match to start the season. They lost 14-5 at Pittsburgh. Men's golf competed at the SIU Edwardsville Fall Invite. They placed 10th overall, and the top EIU finisher was Oscar Borda in 22nd place. Women's tennis competed at the SIU Edwardsville Fall Tournament. Janelle Prisoner was 3-0 in Flight 1 singles play. And softball hosted a fall tournament at Williams Field. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Friday, men's tennis begins a three-day run at the SIU Edwardsville Fall Tournament. Women's soccer is at Lakeside Field with a match against Drake at 3.30. Volleyball begins tournament action at the Kent State Tourney this weekend. They'll take on Illinois Chicago at 4 o'clock. And men's soccer is in Evansville, Indiana for the Evansville Tournament. They'll take on the Phoenix of UW-Green Bay at 5 o'clock. On Saturday, men's tennis continues action at the SIU Edwardsville Fall Tournament. Volleyball with two matches at the Kent State Tourney. They'll take on the host Kent State at 11.30, followed by a 3.30 match against Binghamton. Women's tennis takes on Southern Indiana at 1 o'clock over at Darling Courts. And Panther football is in DeKalb for a matchup with Northern Illinois at 6 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU or watch it on ESPN3. On Sunday, men's tennis wraps up competition at the SIU Edwardsville Fall Tournament. Men's golf is at the Chicago State Tournament. And softball is also up in Chicago at the Illinois-Chicago Fall Tournament. Women's rugby is at Grand Valley State for an early morning match starting at 8.30. Women's soccer with a 1 o'clock match at Lakeside Field against Valparaiso. And men's soccer wraps up tournament action at the Evansville Tourney against the host Purple Aces at 2.30. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kabasyun. Here's Garoppolo out of the gun, looking to throw to the right. Fakes the short pass, now throws it deep up the sideline. Laura's out there, got it to the 20, 10, to the 5, dives. Is he over? Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois Panther football is on WEIU. EIU welcomes OVC rival Southeast Missouri State to O'Brien Field as the Panthers look to defend their conference crown. It's the Panthers and Red Hawks, October 19th at 1.30. WEIU is your home for Panther football. We're going to visit with the Director of Athletics at Eastern Illinois University, Barbara Burke. And Barbara, off to the start of a new school year and uh, things going good with the start of football. I guess it's a good thing when, when football's off to a good start, that sort of helps everybody. You know it is. It gets the energy up of everyone on campus and people want to come out. They want to be around the program. And, you know, it's interesting all the calls and things we get for people, you know, where can I park? Where can I buy tickets? So those are good problems to have and we look forward to that. And, and we're thankful that football has gotten off to a great start. It's kind of cool the way it's worked out too. Eastern has never had two road games to start the year and won them both before, so that really builds momentum for a home opener. You know it does, and, and it's been made very clear to me how difficult the schedule is, and so I take full responsibility for that. But you know, there's a there's a risk reward for it, and right now we're being rewarded a little bit for it, and and I'm just appreciative of the efforts of our team and our coaches and staff. So it's it's been a great start, and um, you know that trip to San Diego and how the team performed there was just amazing and, and they deserve to win it so it's amazing how uh, that the uh, the kind of the, the situation changed just in the last couple of years and expectations I hear, I hear people talking about boy we didn't play very well at Southern Illinois and yet you, you won at Carbondale to me that's enough said you know it's it's funny you say that because um, I had a couple staff members with me and we were traveling home and going boy you know our offense just wasn't clicking and then I got online as we're traveling and and I'm like we had over 600 yards so our offense was clicking and, and um, it is our expectations change very very quickly. We're talking with Eastern's Director of Athletics, Barbara Burke. I know, Barbara, if sport, the sports are like children. You want to love them all equally. But uh, it was a great year last year, too. You won the All-Sports Championship in the OVC. You know, we did. You earned points for your place finishes in all of the OVC Championship sports. We brought home six OVC Championships last year and brought home the uh, Commissioner's Cup for the third time in four years. So we're very proud of the accomplishments of all of our teams. You know, and our track teams have been pretty dominant, both men and women, and, and they've just done a great job. And now our softball team has been very strong the last couple of years so we're excited for all of our teams and they've done a great job and and you know they do a wonderful job representing EIU. 
for the last few years when we've done these sorts of interviews. We've talked a lot about membership in the OVC and expansion and things like that. Well, that's, that's sort of back burner now, isn't it? It's calmed down a little bit, um, not only across the country, but in the OVC. I think we're pretty stable right now. We have a great nucleus of, of uh, programs and institutions that, that all seem to be a great fit for each other and, and we're very respectful of each other. And so I'm, I'm appreciative of that because we can focus on what we need to do and that's our day-to-day -day operations. And then nationally, you know, you always hear the rumors here and there and, um, but I think it has calmed just a little bit and um, EIU is just going to have to pay attention to what's happen happening on a national level as far as NC2A championships and memberships. I, people read a lot about maybe the big, you know, the big schools breaking away or when to have big changes. Is there any, do you have any sort of a sense for what that might mean at Eastern's level? You know, I really don't. I, I've served on the NC2A Championships Cabinet, and there's there's discussion about it, but there's nothing um, formal happening right now. And you, I just don't know what's going to happen, and I'm not sure that anybody does. And I, I think it's in our best interest and my best interest as an athletic director to pay attention to what's happening um, across the country on a national level and, and make sure that our position, EIU, is in a strong position to make and do whatever is necessary to solidify our position in the NC2A. Looking ahead, a month from now, there's going to be basketball practice taking place at Eastern, and uh, I know you're excited about the new season, both the men's and the women's teams. Well, uh, there is a lot of excitement right now for both basketball programs. Coach Spoonauer has a great group coming back. He's done a wonderful job recruiting, and I've been watching them in the, in the individuals, so I think people are going to be a little bit surprised. And then Coach Debbie Black, who we just hired, um, you know, people a little bit worried. We lost a lot, but boy, we've got a lot coming back, and then she was able to fill in a couple of key positions. We have a junior college transfer that I think people are going to be really excited about. So I'm looking forward to that season. And, you know, I don't want to rush the football season along. And um, I just want people to enjoy what our student athletes are doing. That wraps up another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. Thanks for watching. Reminder, we'll wrap up this program with some highlights from the 102nd Mid-America Classic Eastern's big win over Illinois State. Reminder, 6 o'clock is kickoff up in DeKalb and Husky Stadium. Hopefully people will make it up there for the trip. If you can't, listen to the game on the Panther Radio Football Network. We'll see you right back here next week. From O'Brien Field on the campus of Eastern Illinois University in Charleston, welcome to the 102nd renewal of a Central Illinois rivalry, the Eastern Illinois Panthers, set to host the Redbirds of Illinois State. Garoppolo being blitzed, steps up, throwing end zone for Drake. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Drake goes crashing over the barriers at the back of the end zone. He's up and okay, and the Panthers have a chance to tie the game. Second and goal at the five. Fake handoff, Garoppolo. Touchdown over the middle. Andre Hodge, the fullback out of Keyport, New Jersey, with the first catch of his career, and the Panthers have taken the lead on the five-yard touchdown pass. There's the snap, here comes the blitz. Jimmy's gonna throw it deep down the middle. Laura's out there, got it, and he's on his way. Garoppolo burns the blitz. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Garoppolo stayed in there, took the hit, and delivered the ball right in stride for Eric Laura, and the Panthers go up now 19-7. to 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Third down and five. Here's Garoppolo, they're off sides. Garoppolo sets up to pass, marker down, throwing the bomb, Gober behind everybody. Got it at the 45-40, breaks away 30. Gober will score. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Here comes the blitz, Garoppolo's back, looking, throwing the bomb. Got Drake out there, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Adam Drake, his second touchdown tonight. Again, Jack Garoppolo saw the blitz and took advantage. He really did. A heady quarterback. Of course, he's a senior. He's been a starter since he was a freshman. And you'll see here, not only uh, he pumps once, then throws long to Drake. Senior quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo looking for the pass, throwing it for Laura back of the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Laura in the back corner. Just perfect accuracy. Laura's shaking up down there as he got hit out of bounds, and uh, he's up and okay. Six touchdown passes in the ball game now for Garoppolo, and once again, a beautiful toss as he just dropped that in over the top. Garoppolo has tied the Eastern record for touchdown passes in a game with six, tying Jeff Christensen and Tony Romo. First and 10 Panthers at their 27, out of the pistol, handoff up the middle, Little, good hole, 30, pops through 40, Little turns on the burners, he's gone, Shepard Little, first carry of the second half, goes 72 yards for a touchdown. 
he has got some explosiveness, Jack. Yes, he does. There was just a hole there. I don't know where the linebackers were, but nobody was home for Illinois State. A huge hole through the right side, and then it was all Shepard Little, as uh, there was just uh, nobody going to catch him as uh, took it all the way to the house. He's having himself a big night as well. Third and goal at the seven. Here's Garoppolo. He's looking to pass. He's going to throw into the end zone, and touchdown, Eric Laura. I'm not sure how he got that through that window to get him. And it was just great concentration by Laura looking that ball in because he was really covered. The seventh touchdown pass for Jimmy Garoppolo, and that breaks the Eastern record for touchdown passes in a game. He was well covered, and that ball is just perfectly thrown and a great catch by Laura. And the Panthers get the Mid-America Classic Trophy, and now it'll sit in the EIU football offices for the next year, and it'll be right inside the door, prominently displayed. That trophy doesn't like to make round trips. It's just gone one place yep. and stayed there, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully next year we'll just keep it here. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's has alignment checks along with oil changes. Located at 800 Madison in Charleston. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running 24-7.